The Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Alberta Canola Producers Commission, SAS Canola, and Manitoba Canola Growers. Welcome to Real Agriculture's Canola School series. I'm Kara Oosterhouse. Today I have here with me Sean Sanko, who's an agronomy specialist with the Canola Council of Canada. We're standing here in a southern Saskatchewan canola trial that has very much seen the effects of drought, but we're actually here to talk about how to calculate your harvest losses. Sean, what is your message to producers? Well, the number one thing is, you know, we just want people out there actually looking um, to see what they've got for combine losses. Um, you know, t- we want to make sure that we're not seeing those high losses. Uh, a project done, oh, what would it be, five, six years ago now, we're seeing losses in that 3 to 8%, you know, coming out of combines across Western Canada. So we really want to make sure that producers are out there just um, stopping, checking, and, and seeing, you know, what, what is their actual loss on a, on a combine and making sure they're not throwing profits out the back. And can you touch on the importance of checking your combine more than once and even multiple times a day? Yeah, I know there's not that one setting that you can simply find and, and assume now your losses are, are good for the rest of the season. It'll change from, you know, a big thing would be swathing to, to straight cutting. It's, it's a completely different the way the material moves through the combine. But even just um, condition of the, the crops, so if crops been um, laying in a swath for two weeks, and still a bit green uh, stemmed and then you go into something that's been four weeks it'll be completely different as well so really you know every field you you need to be checking um, ideally and even multiple parts of the day you start in a tough morning um, and it gets you know really hot and dry in the afternoon that it's going to change how that material flows through a combine and, and what your losses are at. Do you have any fresh updated numbers on what on average people actually lose by not checking their combine losses? Uh, like I was saying, there was some a study done. Um, it's at least five, six years ago now, and it's looking. It was in that uh, I believe it was three to eight um, percent loss out the back of a combine. It varied from, and it, ideally we want to be. I think most of the PAMI work says about two percent loss is kind of where you're still making use of that combine. Combines aren't cheap. You got to get something done in a day. So I mean, you can get below that, but that's kind of the efficiency curve where you're still getting a lot through that combine and you're not putting out much out the back. So that, that 2% is, is kind of the, the key area to be. Um, yeah, and it, it, it varies a lot. There's actually um, some work being done again. Another uh, PAMI's doing a study this year looking at losses. So we'll have some numbers, um, uh, some fresh numbers in the, the coming years on what we're actually seeing for losses out there. And what sort of tools are available for producers if they're not quite sure how to calculate those losses? Well, the actual tools for measuring can be as simple as a, a baking pan, um, right down to, you know, there's a lot of uh, automated drop pans now you can you can pick up. There's multiple companies selling them to make it life easier and safer if you've got one of those, but don't be scared to try with a, a regular pan. Also, there's um, some good online calculators, um, harvest loss calculators, where it, it makes it really simple. You can just go in, plug in your numbers, and it'll calculate, um, you know, all you need is the size of your pan, uh, the width of your, your header, the width of your sieve, and you can pretty much calculate exactly what you've got um, for losses in the field at that point. So it makes it really simple to, to check. Great. Anything else you'd like to add? Uh, I guess at the moment, you know, it, we've been having um, a lot of uh, frost um, warnings and issues coming around. So I uh, get a lot of calls on that. And just the, the thing I like to say is, you know, don't don't panic when you're, you're hearing there's a frost coming. Typically, we don't hear about it till the day of or maybe a day before. And uh, even at that, weather can be very unpredictable and, and forecasting. So at that point, um, swathing the crop, you can't get the moisture down low enough anyway to, to be dry enough to be safe so it doesn't lock in the green seeds. So you're usually better off waiting, see what actually happens, you know, was, has a frost come through? If it does, you've usually got that uh, two to three days before the plants will start to whiten up and, um, and have any possible seed loss. So. You know, the thing I just really want to highlight is don't don't panic um, if you hear there's a frost coming. Wait to see what actually happens with the frost, and you know after that point you can make a decision. 